That was, in fact, the birth of these poems, Ian, those, those chips on the floor. It's so nice to see you all here tonight, and my honour and privilege to be on this shortlist with these poets, poets new to me, and also poets who are good friends. Uh, thank you so much to the T.S. Eliot um, Prize and to my publisher, Blood Axe. Um, I'll begin with a poem that's about a teacher that really changed my life um, when I wasn't allowed into the school sick form. I got sent off to the local FE college and there I met um, John Toulon who taught a very radical uh, curriculum and really galvanised my love of literature and its political power. So this poem is about him and for him as well. Pink Hummingbird. The postcard he sent to you in that long wet summer had on one side a pale pink hummingbird and over leaf his notes on your essay on Faulkner. In his usual turquoise ink, the words you imagined written in sunlight on the bed of his book stuffed flat and each weighed with care like a love letter, though it was you that wanted him. All summer, you waited for September to be back again in the tattered classroom, the tables pushed together, and him at the top, like a doting father or a bridegroom, or like God, if God wore Dr. Martin's shoes and a silver sleeper in one ear. Not the God you didn't believe in, but one who believed in you. Well, I became a teacher, I think, of that same age group, 16 to 19, partly because of John, although I suspect I was in no way as inspiring as him in my early years of teaching. So there are some poems in the collection that are called The Art of Teaching, but the title is, you know, ironically deployed. The Art of Teaching 2. Boredom hangs like a low cloud in the classroom. Each page we read is a step up a mountain in gluey boots. Even the clock face is pained, and yes, I'm sure now, ticking slower. If gloom has a sound, it's the voice of Leroy reading Frankenstein aloud. <laughs> and if we break to talk, I know my questions are feeble sparks that won't ignite my students' barely beating hearts. There is no Volta here, no turn, just more of the same, the cloud sinking ever lower, the air damper, yet more rain. And the task is unchanging, like spending years chasing a monster you yourself created. Leroy asks if he can stop reading. I say, for now, he can. The only English kid. When the debate got going on Englishness, I pity the only English kid, poor Johnny in his spotless Reeboks and blue Fred Perry. He had a voice from history, the no miss, yes miss, no miss, all treacly cockney, rag and bone. And while the others claimed Poland, Ghana, Bulgaria, and shook off England like the wrong team shirt, John brewed his tea exclusively on Holloway Road. So when Asif mourned the George Cross banner, swinging freely like a warning from his neighbour's roof, the subway tunnel tagged in Muslim scum, poor John would sit there quietly, looking guilty for all the awful things he hadn't done. Well, I'm sure the erudite and learned audience know that um, the restoration diarist Samuel Pepys's name is not spelt uh, in the way that it sounds. But when I was teaching the Restoration, a few years into my career, I did not know this. <laughs> Peppies. <laughs> the posh girls came and took a corner table, all lip gloss and ribbony hair, and each with a fan of starry GCSEs and a summer of youth hostels in Europe behind them, and the future wide open to them like a rainbow parasol, or so I thought. It was restoration comedies, and I was reading the class an essay, and though I'd seen his name, I'd never heard it. 
Peppies, I said it, peppies over and over until one girl spoke up. Do you mean peeps? She said, her voice pulled taut as a noose as if I were the girl and she the teacher. And what could I have said? Peppies, 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 cool as the trickster, ridiculous as the fool. So the book is very much about my experiences as a teacher, but also about my experiences of being taught and learning in all kinds of ways, both uh, inside and outside of the classroom. And the poem I'll read now is definitely about learning outside of the classroom. It's about my parents and, and for them too. Players. My parents taught me smoking. The midnight nip to the Esso garage for 20 players. The kitchen table vigil lighting one tip from another then another. No matches or lighter, they bent to the cooker's flame. No credit, no cash. My dad would search the bin to twist tobacco from dog ends, squeeze it, suck it in. Or flush, they pile nine, ten black boxes on the bureau, small coffins in a stack. Stained walls, grey fog, the constant tweezering of fags, that plug between the lips. It took me years to stop. Though still some lonely nights, I spark one up, and that red light in the darkness leads me back to where they're waiting, holding out. Sonnet for Darren. Oh. Sorry, bear with me. Men don't look at me like this anymore. The way this tall young man is looking at me. I feel my heart swing open like a door. The traffic lights flash red. My son, just three, rolls backwards and forwards on his tricycle. The man still looking, yes, at me, his smile like heaven. I remember this, trouble, desire, bliss, but God, it's been a while. And here he is, so close I can smell his skin, white t-shirt gleaming, his afro flamed like sunbeams around his face, which is lovely, like a dream I used to have. And now his mouth is moving, saying, Miss, it's me, Darren, remember? <laughs> we chat, lights change, Rory and I cross over. <laughs> and I'll finish with a poem for one of my teachers and a dear friend, Mimi Calvati. Uh, the poem's about, for anyone here that has ever worked hard at anything, poetry or whatever it might be, um, to go at something with great tenacity. And again, my thanks to you for listening tonight. Kathy, Carla, for Mimi Calvati. The body is something like a poem, I guess, as I watch my yoga teacher, Kathy, on the back row mat of Carla's yoga class. Kathy can do king pigeon, crow, full monkey. Yet here she is in a simple forward bend while Carla lays her palms around her core to push her deeper. Can every pose be deepened, I wonder? Can what's been mastered be mastered more? A poem is something like a body, I guess, when I'm holding someone else's poem in this sun-filled room they've called a masterclass. But I'm not a master, just a pair of palms which push or pull or loosen someone's lines. I still need kind and guiding hands on mine. Thank you.